good to have everybody here who's joining us in whatever capacity. Sandy Holbrook is here uh, helping us with Stations of the Cross this evening, and we hope that everybody who is joining us through live stream, you are uh, going to have a very uh, meaningful experience this evening. So we begin tonight, as we always do, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. Let us pray. O merciful Savior, Grant that while we follow your blessed footsteps along the way of sorrow, our hearts may, may be so touched with true contrition that you may turn our weeping into gladness by giving us forgiveness of all our sins. Amen. Amen. Holy God, holy, holy and mighty, mighty holy, holy immortal, immortal one, one, have mercy on us. The first station, Jesus is condemned to death. We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you. Because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. In words and in attitudes, we point the finger at each other, blaming each other for our own problems. The Romans condemned Jesus to death as a rabble rouser, a supposed threat to Pax Romana. But all it did was to reveal to everyone how much their rule over Palestine was based on brute force alone. They condemned Jesus, but in doing so, they condemned their own occupation of Jesus' homeland. Likewise, when we point the finger at others, we condemn ourselves, revealing our own weaknesses that are displayed by our need to blame others. Whom do we blame for the ways in which we suffer? In what ways does our blaming and condemnation of others make us suffer more, as well as to cause them hurt and harm? Let us pray. Lord Christ, help us to see you in all people, those we love, and those we must learn to love. Amen. Holy God, holy and mighty, holy immortal one, have mercy on us. The second station, Jesus takes up his cross. We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you, because, because by, by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. We each have our own cross to bear. This common phrase has some truth to it. Suffering is the universal condition of humankind. The Christian religion makes this point by making the cross its most central image. For Jesus, According to the legends that shaped the medieval stations of the cross, the cross was unbearable. It was too heavy for him to carry after being whipped and scourged by the Romans. And for us too, there are times when our crosses are too heavy to bear. What cross do we carry through life? When has it become too heavy for us to bear? Have we asked for help in removing it from God and from others? Let us pray. Holy Jesus, help us to be like you, never afraid to help another. Amen. Amen. Holy God, holy and mighty, holy immortal one, have mercy on us. The third station, Jesus falls the first time. We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you. Because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. According to the station's tradition, Jesus fell three times as he was marched to Golgotha to be crucified. Each of us will fall at some point in our life by tripping on a rock, a life crisis, an illness, or just old age. To fall down is an injury to one's dignity as well as to one's body. Yet Jesus said, that the stone of stumbling would become the cornerstone, the most important stone in the building of the new kingdom of heaven. We all fall down, 
And while this is painful for us, it is also what levels us all, rich and poor, strong and weak, famous and unknown, and puts us in our place. And this is the promise that our stone of stumbling can be transformed into the cornerstone of the new life on the other side of the cross. What is the stone that makes us stumble and fall? What is it like to be humbled in front of other people as well as in front of God? How can our stumbling stone be transformed into the foundation of a new and better life for us and for others? Let us pray. Holy God, we often make mistakes and stumble from fear or lack of trust. Help us to always get up again and continue in a life of journey in a life in a life journey of love. Amen. Yes. Holy God, holy and mighty, holy immortal one, have mercy on us. The fourth station, Jesus meets his afflicted mother. We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you. Because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. Jesus and Mary endured one of the greatest trials that confronts human beings. The son had to endure humiliation in front of his mother, and the mother had to witness the destruction of her son. Being a parent and being a child, these are relationships that are incredibly beautiful, but being a parent and being a child can also be incredibly painful. Each of us has given our parents and or our children both joy and pain. Jesus and Mary tasted both. What unfinished business do we have with our parents or with our children? If this was our last chance to communicate, what would we say to our parent or to our child? Let us pray. Holy God, help us to forgive those who have hurt us, and may we never forget your love is endless. Amen. Holy God, holy and mighty, holy immortal one, have mercy on us. The fifth station. The cross is laid on Simon of Cyrene. We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you. Because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. Jesus was too weak to carry his own cross according to the station's tradition. A man named Simon, who came to Jerusalem from his home in Cyrene in North Africa to celebrate Passover in Jerusalem, was picked, apparently at random, to carry Jesus' cross. Sometimes we are asked to carry burdens for other people. They need our help, and we are called to make sacrifices for them. But sometimes we feel that by doing so, we are participating in their own destruction. When is it right to take on the burdens of others? And when should we let them suffer on their own? But in the end, we each are called to bear the sufferings of others, and others are asked to bear our own. Jesus carried the cross out of love for others, and Simon carried it for Jesus. What crosses are we asked to carry for others? Do we do so willingly or grudgingly? Does taking up their crosses help them or hurt them even more? Who carries the cross for me? Loved ones, friends, family, co-workers, others. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, may we never allow our pride to stop us from helping another. Amen. Holy God, holy and mighty, holy immortal one, have mercy on us. The sixth station, a woman wipes the face of Jesus. We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you. Because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. According to the station's tradition, Veronica was one of the women of Jerusalem who followed Jesus to the cross. She wiped his face to offer comfort, and his image remained on the cloth. The cloth became a relic that had healing powers. The name Veronica probably means true image, the true image of the Christ, which can be found in every human being. 
Let us look in the mirror. Do we see the true image of Christ in our own image? Do we see the suffering of the Christ and also the one for whom the Christ is willing to suffer? Let us pray. Loving God, help us to be vessels of your joy, healing broken hearts with your love. Amen. Holy God, holy and mighty, holy immortal one, have mercy on us. The seventh station, Jesus falls a second time. We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you. Because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. Jesus, weakened by beatings, fell again on his way to Golgotha. It is more likely that we will fall when we are already beaten down by the problems of life, illness, or other disasters in life. Insults get added to injuries. The rich get richer, the poor get poorer. When we are weakened by one disaster, we are made more vulnerable to others. Life isn't fair, but each time we have a choice, whether to stay down or whether to stand up for life again, even if it means facing the chance of falling once more. What hurts have we experienced, both physically and emotionally, that leave us more vulnerable to, to more hurt? Have we chosen to hide or excessively protect ourselves from further suffering? Or have we chosen to take the chance of being hurt again? Let us pray. Compassionate God, forgive us for the times we have ignored others' pains or even added to it by speaking against them instead of loving them. Amen. Holy God, holy and mighty, holy immortal one, have mercy on us. The eighth station, Jesus, uh, Jesus meets the women of Jerusalem. We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. Jesus encountered a group of women who were his followers, who wailed about his impending death. He told them to wail not for him, but instead for themselves and for Jerusalem, which he predicted would one day be destroyed. Indeed, about 70 years later, the Romans completely destroyed Jerusalem, and the people of Israel were driven out of the country not, only, not to return until this past century. Sometimes we lack perspective. We act as if our troubles are just our own, but none of us live in a vacuum. Each of us is a part of a larger history, a longer and bigger human drama. Understanding our place in history is both a comfort and a curse. What is our place in history? What is our role in the bigger human drama of destruction and redemption? How do we and how can we make a difference in the unfolding of human destiny? Let us pray. Savior, help us to always be a carrier of your divine love, even in times when we would rather lash out or ignore those around us. Amen. Holy God, holy and mighty, Holy Immortal One, have mercy on us. The Ninth Station, Jesus falls a third time. We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you. Because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. Jesus fell a third time on his way to crucifixion, adding to the station's tradition. He had lost his strength, his power, his reputation. Many of his followers had abandoned him, and now he faced the ultimate humiliation. Not only did he lose everything, he was tormented with the knowledge of his loss as he approached Golgotha. What have we lost along life's way? In what way are we cursed by these losses, and in what ways are we liberated? If we could have anything back that we have lost, what would it be? And what would we do with it if we had the second chance? What do we have to lose now? Dignity, pride, position? And what would it be like to lose it? 
Is there anything positive that has come from our losses? Let us pray. Holy Jesus, help us to see those in need and meet that need as we are able. Amen. Holy God, holy and mighty, holy immortal one, have mercy on us. The tenth station, Jesus is stripped of his garments. We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you. Because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. In Jesus' time, it was extremely humiliating to be stripped naked, even more so than it is today. Jesus was completely exposed. There was nothing hidden anymore. His robe or cloak were taken by the Roman soldiers who drew lots to see which of them would get it. Throw the dice. Whatever number comes up, open the box with that number to see if we won Jesus' garment. If we could wear that garment, what would it hide? What part of our life do we want to keep undercover? What would it be like to wear the cloak of the Christ, to walk a mile in his shoes? And in what ways have we made light, downplayed, or disrespected the suffering of ourselves and others? Let us pray. Holy God, help us to never hide behind our religion as an excuse to hate another or withhold your love because we do not agree with someone else. Amen. Holy God, holy and mighty, holy immortal one, have mercy on us. <clears throat> the eleventh station, Jesus is nailed to the cross. We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you. Because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. His last words were, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? This was the moment of Jesus' worst suffering, but it is also the pivotal moment of the gospel story, the precise moment when God and human beings are closest together, the precise moment when divine salvation comes to humanity. Only through this moment is the door to the other side of the cross opened. When have we lost God? And when have we been closest to God? Has there ever been a time when both were true at the same moment? Let us pray. Holy God, grant me the strength to accept when change is necessary and healthy. Amen. Amen. Holy God, holy and mighty, holy immortal one, have mercy on us. The twelfth station. Jesus dies on the cross. We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you. Because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. Jesus really died. No matter how we read the story, the Jesus who lived before the crucifixion was different than the Christ who was resurrected. The gospel story in the Bible show, shows that the resurrected Christ was substantially different after his death than before the crucifixion. Jesus was never quite the same after his death, and so it is with us. We experience little deaths that change us forever. We really aren't the same people, exactly, that we were when we were children, nor will we be exactly the same people in years to come. Each major passage of life, childhood to adolescence, adolescence to adulthood, parenthood to grandparenthood, leave us change forever Make us different people than we were before. What part of us has died? What part of us is dying? What new life is emerging from these deaths? Let us pray. Holy God, help us to find peace in your love when it seems all is lost. Amen. Holy God, holy and mighty, holy immortal one, have mercy on us. The thirteenth station. The body of Jesus is placed in the arms of his mother. We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you. 
because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. The Gospels tell us that one of the leaders of the temple, a man named Joseph of Arimathea, a man who was himself looking for the kingdom of God and a secret admirer of Jesus, uh, asked to remove and bury the body after his crucifixion. Quietly, Joseph took on this sad and thankless task, which surely must have exposed him to danger from the Romans as well as the other members of the Jewish Sanhedrin. According to the medieval legends, Joseph later came to England to establish the Christian church there, and in England, he placed the Holy Grail, the cup used by Jesus in the Last Supper, in a well at Glastonbury. When have we been served profoundly by people who have helped us in secret with no thought of reward or even thanks? What thankless hard tasks are we asked to do for the sake of others? Are we willing to do them without recognition or reward? When is it appropriate to expect thanks and reward for our good work? And when does public acknowledgement just get in the way of serving, uh, in, in, uh, in the way of being of service? Let us pray. Holy God, help us to never forget that we are beautiful persons. Amen. Holy God, holy and mighty, Holy Immortal One, have mercy on us. The 14th station, Jesus is laid in the tomb. We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you. Because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. Jesus' death was shameful, but he was buried respectfully and honorably. Joseph of Arimathea wrapped his body in a shroud and placed it in a new tomb with herbs and spices in the traditional manner. So often we treat a person one way in life and quite another way after their death. Can we celebrate each other's life while we are still alive, at least as much as we celebrate each other's lives after death? The tomb was the cocoon, the womb in which the story of Jesus, the historical person of first century Palestine, gestated and was transformed into the universal and eternal Christ. Each of the three days in the tomb was a trimester in that gestation period, ending with the resurrection we celebrate at Easter. What part of our life is entombed, on hold, unseen, dead to the world and to ourselves? What would happen if that part of our life was transformed and brought back to life in a new way? Are we ready for this kind of resurrection? Let us pray. Lord Jesus, we do not always understand why things happen. Some are your will and some are not. But may we always expect and seek after your resurrection. Amen. Holy God, holy and mighty, Holy Immortal One, have mercy on us. Save you the world by your cross and precious death you have redeemed us. Save us and help us, we humbly beseech you, O Lord. Let us pray. Almighty and ever-loving God, in your tender love for the human race, you sent your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, to take upon him our nature and to suffer death upon the cross, giving us the example of his great humility. Mercifully grant that we may walk in the way of his suffering and also share in his resurrection through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. Amen.